All right, I've installed my Starlink and I have a ton of first impressions for you. The longest part of the setup is going to be figuring out where to put it, believe it or not. There are two sort of constraints you have to deal with. The kickstand issue, which is unique to the bigger standard kit. So the standard kit is designed to be placed on a flat surface when using the standard issue kickstand. It's designed to provide the perfect angle for the dish. Then the 15 meter cable that was Hobonea for Rufaro but barely made it for me. The router is here and not at the corner of my desk over there because the standard issue 15 meter cable was a little bit too short. Constraints aside, the setup process is pretty easy only if you're putting the dish on a cooperating surface. So before you get onto the roof, be sure to connect the router to power and ensure that it's switched on. Then make sure you have the 15 meter standard issue cable connected to the router and the dish. If you're confident in those connections and where you're putting the kit, you can begin running the setup in the Starlink mobile app. You will need to use the Starlink mobile app. The setup was pretty straightforward for me, easy to follow step by step with pretty clear action items. They worked really hard to make it as simple as can be. The app even shows you how much the dish is out of alignment and how you need to move it so that it's properly aligned. It's really brilliant. The most complicated part for me was, since I was mounting it on the roof, I had to secure it so it didn't slide off the roof. Then I had to take care of that seven degrees that was putting my kit out of alignment. And yes, I just added a two by four piece of wood and voila, perfectly aligned. I ran my first speed test about five minutes after completing the setup and I got a download speed of 59 megabits per second. Not bad for Zim standards, but kind of low for Starlink. This was around 9 a.m. on Saturday, by the way. Ran another test at night and got 110 megabits per second. That's more like it and honestly, 100 megabits per second is the fastest internet I've ever used, so I was happy. Then Sunday afternoon, this happened. hundred and nineteen megabits per second maximum recorded download speed the average download speed was around 120 megabits per second throughout the whole weekend and the lowest speed I recorded was 25 megabits per second it's fast all right however there is a fair bit of latency that always hovers around the 200 millisecond region ideally you want it to be zero but in the real world you want it to be at the very most double digits fiber and LTE or 5g do a better job there let me explain latency a bit. Your download speed is how big the pipe is. It is a measure of the amount of stuff the pipe can carry. Latency or lag is how long it takes for that stuff to go from the source to the destination. Put simply, Starlink has a very large pipe and it can fill up the tank very quickly. But when you open the tap, it takes a very long time till the juice comes out at the other end of the pipe. What this means in the real world is that if you're downloading files, working online, and streaming on Netflix, Starlink is amazing at that. But when it comes to applications that require real-time live communication, like let's say competitive online gaming, you'll experience lag on Starlink greater than fiber, LTE, or 5G. Something that comes into mind is if the $30 package performs the same, then there is no incentive to get the $50 subscription unless that data prioritization is a must. Oh, the router's Wi-Fi signal coverage is slightly better than the LTE Huawei router that I was using. I'm getting good coverage over roughly 350 square meters and even signals in rooms that used to be dead zones with my old router. Router performance is good. Oh, and there is only one button on this router, a reset button placed between the two ethernet ports. I was absolutely enjoying my Starlink up until... Yeah, I was so convinced that you get a complimentary free month of internet access upon your first purchase, but looks like you get 14 days from the moment you activate your kit, so yeah. The Starlink system is super high tech and I have three highlight features from it. The whole system learns and optimizes itself after you've set it up. It will share its position and orientation with the satellite so that when it connects to the satellite, it's receiving the most optimal signal. 
for the best performance. In a way, it self-focuses over time, something that I feel contributed to my speeds improving throughout the weekend. The app has this cool animation for obstructions, which starts off empty soon after startup and gets filled with a sphere of what the dish sees over time. Blue is cool, red is dead. You can see anyone connected to the router very easily and you have the option to pause internet access for anyone connected. You can see each person's download speed too. So if you wanna run an internet cafe, hint, hint, wink, wink. Specs for nerds, there is a stats section on the app that shows a lot of juicy data in real time, like uptime, latency, current network download and upload activity, and even real time power consumption for the whole system. It's amazing for sure, but it's not perfect. I already talked about the high latency being an issue for real-time applications. This standard kit has been consuming an average of 60 watts of power, which is just shy of three times what your regular ADSL or fiber router consumes. I'm operating 100% off grid, and so my humble solar system is feeling it. It's not a disaster, but definitely something you'll notice after running it overnight. I haven't experienced its severity just yet, but since Starlink is a satellite service, it will be affected by bad weather. I'll keep you posted on how badly weather can affect Starlink's performance, but these are inconveniences you will not experience on fiber, LTE, or 5G when it works. So is it worth it? Look, Starlink is not going to be for everyone. The way I see it, Starlink has two main attributes it's selling to Zimbos. Reliability is one. Networks in Zimbabwe have been very unstable these past few years, and I know horror stories people have had, including failing crucial online exams and losing online job interviews after internet yango zima. Last one, yaga to ndibato na February, guys, ma one. So, people like me are interested in Starlink's proposition of being a more reliable option to everything else we have right now. That said, I know it doesn't like rainy weather, so it's not bulletproof by reliability. Bandwidth cost is another appealing Starlink proposition. When you look at how much megabits per second you get per dollar, there is no beating Starlink in Zimbabwe. I mean, one Omega, Econet SmartBiz 5 is kept at 5 megabits per second for 45 bucks, and Starlink's $50 package is doing on average around 100 megabits per second from my own experience using it. Some napkin mats gives us $9 per megabit per second on Econet versus 50 cents per megabit per second on Starlink. That's 18 times more performance for the same amount of money. 18. I'm genuinely happy with my two days of using it. If you're already on an unlimited package and you're not too pressed with high latency issues, I'll definitely recommend Starlink. It's at the very least delivering on its promise thus far. I was planning on releasing this one on Friday, but consider this my first impressions of Starlink. Teach I DP Sanya as time goes on. I'll see you sooner than you think. Sooner than you think.